So uh, you will have a better sound, and I hope our video recording of lecture would help you to understand uh, what I uh, what I uh, lectured. Uh, okay. And everybody knows how to access our video file. Everybody knows. Okay. If there is a somebody who do not does not know to how to access our video file, please ask to our assistant. Okay. Let's uh, start to review the what we learned at. The last lecture. This is lecture number eight. Uh, let's review what we learned. <coughs> okay. <coughs> we learned last lecture what kind of vibration we will have due to base excitation and rotating on balance and then how to use the single degree of vibration system to design the measurement device for example accelerometer how the accelerometer actually works how we use the principle we learned to design the accelerometer, the measurement devices. Okay, those are the examples, examples that actually use the theory we learned Okay. And we use this example, and then we modeled. Do I have a two L over here? Well, no. Doesn't matter. Okay. Modeling. So for base excitation, we model this using mass spring dash pass system and then we allow the base movement and then for rotating machinery we assume that there is a mass but there is a small mass that is rotating with the frequency omega and then we also assume that there is a spring and dash part for the measurement device, we thought that there is a small mass and a spring and a dash part, and there is some resistance, therefore we can induce some voltage difference. Or we, we may substitute this spring and a dash part to the piezoelectric material. The piezoelectric material certainly has certainly had the spring and dash part too. So this is good model that really mimics the those examples. And what we done after this? We got solution. Okay. No, no, no sorry. We got governing equation. that completely describe the model we had. The governing equation for the, road, for the base excitation case is mx mx double dot plus c x dot minus y dot plus k x minus y is equal to zero. And we assume that base is moved as uh, y sine omega b t. Okay. 
And then for unbalanced max case, the governing equation derived was mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx equal to m zero e omega r square sine omega rt. Okay. And we saw that the contribution of omega r is a huge compared with the contribution of m0 and e. Therefore, when we make omega r bigger and bigger, the excitation goes to as the square of the omega. Okay. And then for the measurement device case, what we, the governing equation we had was a C the same as the uh, base excitation case, but the measure, what we measure is a Z, that is X minus Y. Therefore, the, uh, have the governing equation like this in terms of Z, that is KZ equal M omega B scale Y cosine omega B T. Okay. And then we have a solution. Okay, for base excitation unbalanced base excitation and a rotating unbalance. And then finally we look at this solution in terms of magnitude and phase. Actually, we only look at the magnitude. Okay? And for the base excitation, it looks like there's a 1, and then some peak, and then decay. But interesting point was square root 2, and if we look at the magnitude in terms of R, that is the ratio between excitation for excitation frequency to the natural frequency of the system. And what we learned from this graph is this region when excitation, base excitation frequency is bigger than square root 2, the amplitude of response getting bigger and bigger as we make damping bigger and bigger that really opposed to our common sense. And for the uh, response of rotating unbalanced case, we have another imp interesting phenomena that related to magnitude 1 was we have this kind of behavior. Okay. So when we increase the damping, independent to the damping in this region, the rotating unbalanced response approach to 1. Okay. And another example was for the, uh, no, I don't think so. I think what I told you was wrong. Let me check. <laughs>